Hello and welcome back to the studio. Today, another Bob Ross classic, this time from season 21. This is Serenity, and it's a particular favourite of mine. I've painted this a few times, and each time I add a little bit of extra to it. My usual little twist. This time I've added a little hole in my tree and put a few rays of light behind it. Now, it's not a painting without a few hitches and troubles. It's easy to go off the track with this one. And you'll see, if you watch my painting all the way through to the end, I got myself into, well, a bit of one of my classic pickles, but I resolved it quite quickly. But the name of the game really for this painting is to do some of it and then to live with it. Learn to live with your mistakes for a little while before you decide to change things. So, you know the routine, sit back, relax, and see if you can get some serenity and paint your version of this. Happy people painting. See, I got that one wrong. <laughs> Here's my canvas. And for this Bob Ross classic, I'm going to need to put some gesso on here. I also need to paint a nice big tree, but, well, maybe you don't have a foam brush. Or you don't have a nice piece of sponge. What else could you use? I know, let's make a brush. I start off with a piece of kitchen towel. And I just want to tear this in strips. Tear from perforation to perforation to make an edge. We want this to be nice and ragged. Now, just gently roll it up. A couple of strips make quite a nice little brush. You can tap and you can paint with it. You might also want to give it a bit of a snip to get some nice sort of flared ends. Now, I want to position my tree about a third up from that bottom left corner and about a third in from the top right corner. So a couple of nice points of interest. I don't want to make it too wide. I'm just sort of sketching at this stage with a few nice lumps and bumps on it, but we'll make it wider later. Take care not to let the tree grow too low into the corner or too wide. Now back into the black gesso. Use that little brush to make some nice little imprints, dib dabs, touches, little dots of colour here and there. And if it clogs up, just unroll it a bit and then re-roll it. Let the paint run out as you head towards the tree. I don't want to overfill this area too much with dark paint. One area I would like to have some dark colour though is down here at the base of the tree. Make sure you've got a good amount of colour in there. You'll see why later on. Now, set your art watch for at least half an hour to let this dry. My canvas has dried and it's ready to start applying some oil paint. I'm going to begin with this Bob Ross Liquid Clear Oil Paint. I got some in a small airtight container for ease of application. And as you see, I'm using an old Bob Ross one inch landscape brush. This is quite a vigorous stage, so don't use a nice brush for it. You want something that's got a little bit of wear and tear on it already. Notice how I scrub the liquid clear into the canvas. Make sure you apply this very thinly and evenly. I finish off with a few long strokes. Check your canvas. There should be barely any on the end of your fingertip. My first colours are white, phthalo blue and some alizarin crimson. I'll add the rest of the colours later on, but the first stage is to make a nice lavender colour. I take a good amount of alizarin crimson and a small amount of phthalo blue. Phthalo blue's very strong, and I don't want this colour to go, well, too much to the blue side. I mix it in thoroughly until I get a nice sort of lavender tone, maybe slightly more crimson. Then I'm going to go back to the old Bob Ross 1 inch brush we applied the liquid clear with. Don't forget, give it a dry clean first because there were a lot of liquid clear hiding in the bristles. I'm going to apply this colour to the whole of my canvas, but make sure you give it a good thick coating. That's it, on the right hand side there. That's what I'm looking for. If you don't apply enough this colour, then the painting lacks, well, depth of colour. It sort of comes out a bit more to the grey side, not particularly attractive. There. Do a quick fingertip test and check. I want to make sure I've got a good coverage all over. Now, with a clean dry brush, I'm 
going to start adding a few bright highlights to my background. I've added a tiny touch of Indian yellow to my team white. Bob didn't do this in his original version of the painting, but I like to just add a little bit more warmth to my colour. Just personal preference. And I'm going to go just to the top left side of my tree, on the corner of my brush, and give it a twirl. Don't worry about the tree, we'll get that back in a minute. I just want to create a lovely dappled light effect at this stage. Allow the brush to run out of paint, but don't over blend it too much. Otherwise you can just end up with, well, one flat sort of lavender colour. I want to increase the brightness just in this left hand side. I'll add a touch more of this highlighting colour here. But I'm having a good idea, I think. Maybe I could add a few rays of light. You know me, I always like to give my paintings a little extra twist. I turn my brush on its corner and just gently drag the paint across the tree. Once again, don't worry about the tree. We'll get it back, you know, just where it is on the canvas. I stand back and have a good look from the other side of the room and make sure you like the effect. I try not to make it look too uniform. And I don't really want them to look like laser beams, just a soft, gentle light. Yeah, I think that works quite well. Set that nice brush to one side. We'll use it for highlights later on. But I've gone back to my old Bob Ross 1H brush. Notice how I load just the corner of the brush with some of that dark lavender colour. I wanted to use the corner of my brush just to create some nice foliage effects. Take careful note. I just add a little touch of colour here and there. I want to create the illusion of some nice leafy branches and bushes kind of hanging in from the side of the canvas. I've slowed it down a bit for you so you can see what I'm doing with the brush. Take care though, I'm not tipping the brush completely on its corner. I might do a little demo for you in a moment. For the right hand side, I want to tip my brush more to the right hand corner. As you see, just a few touches of colour and texture is all I need. Finally, let's add a little bit of structure to our painting. I've put a few drops of oil into some of that lavender colour and I'm using my liner brush to create a few tree trunks, a few sticks and twigs. But don't overdo it. We're going to be putting highlights here so a lot of what you create might get covered up. I'll add a few to the right hand side as well. Now, time for a bit of a close-up demonstration here. I want to really get you to sort of hone in on the technique I'm using called corner of the brush. So I've got a piece of canvas board here and a nice new brush. When you watch me paint it on the video, it looks like I'm doing that with my brush. In other words, I'm tapping on edge. But actually what I'm doing is I'm actually tapping on a corner like that. It's a subtle difference. It's just a trick of the camera. So when you're tapping, make sure you've got firstly your brush tipped away from the canvas and you're touching just with the back corner. Let me turn that round for you to the other angle. You're just touching with that corner. But the back corner is away from the canvas. So you're just touching with one rounded corner. There. I hope that explains it better than I did it on the video. Onwards with the painting. Now, time for the real thing. I've got that nice one inch brush back and I give it a little bit of a dry clean just to make sure the bristles aren't clogged up. Notice how I carefully load my brush by pushing into the paint. And just as I did on that demo, I want to angle my brush to the left, catching some of the light from those rays. Now, take a stand back because I think that might be a little bit too bright, a bit too white. I've tinted it with a little bit more red and crimson. I wanted a slightly more sort of pinkish salmon colour, but I'll live with it for the time being. Top tip, if you're not sure about the colours, live with them. Let them stay on your painting for the day, or even a couple of days. You can always come back and overpaint them if you want to, but you never know, it might be the best thing in your painting. I've started to add a little more lavender to my colour. I want this to become more so dark and shadowy. I use less and less paint and allow more and more of the dark lavender colour to peek through. Remember, you want the eye to be focused in the centre of your painting. 
I think these little tree branches will be backlit. In other words, they're catching the glow of light. So I'm going for a bright colour here. Notice again though, I've tipped onto my right hand corner. You'll also notice how gentle I am with the brush. My canvas barely moves. It just gives a little bit under the pressure of the brush. You may not realise it, but I'm actually painting on a paper DIY canvas. But I tape it to a real canvas, so I've got that lovely sense of bounce. Now, time to mix up a new colour. I've added some sap green to my palette. I'm going to mix that into the lavender. It sort of creates a nice sort of olive green tone. Perfect to texture the background of my painting. Once again, back in with my old one inch brush. This time I want to create some foliage texture in the background. Now I realise you won't be able to see this because I'm painting dark on dark, but trust me, to add texture, it makes highlighting so much easier. And you can let a few branches just sort of hang in over the highlight area if you want as well. There. I'll add a few more down the side too. I've added some cad yellow to my palette. These are going to be for highlighting. And again, I've gone back to my nice one inch brush, the one with the lovely soft bristles. But I need to tone this down. Far too bright. So I've added a little bit of my sort of lavender green colour into it to tone it right down. And you might think, mm, that doesn't look very bright. But let's check it against the painting. You might be quite surprised. This colour really stands out against that dark colour in the background. I think I enjoy painting black gesso canvases so much for this lovely bright colour that you can achieve, even with relatively dull tones. Things just seem to pop. There. I stand back and I think I've got just about the right balance. But again, let the colour run out a bit here and there. Let the eye be drawn to the middle of your painting. I add a bit more to the left hand side as well. Again, vary the colours. I use a little bit of Indian yellow now and then and then pack in to my cad yellow. I also add a tiny little bit of phthalo blue into the lavender tone. As you see, it gives a nice sort of, well, sort of almost turquoisey green colour. Really play with the tones here. You can have so much fun with this painting. A few little touches of colour in the centre. And I'll add a few branches as well. I've got my liner brush back and I've taken a tiny drop of light colour, doesn't have to be clean white, into some dark sienna and Van Dyke brown with a drop of oil. Drop in a few branches here and there. They're what I call stop-start branches. They sort of peek out in the gaps. Let's have a look at this tree. I've put some black beside my Van Dyke brown and I'm using a Bob Ross filbert brush. I load it very well with colour. I'm going to just paint right through these beams of light. The nice dark colour is strong enough to just overcome them. This pushes the beams back behind the tree. But notice how I wiggle my brush to get some lovely lumps and bumps. I want lots of character for this painting and my tree needs to be nice and knotty. I, I sort of try maybe getting a few of the beams of light to pass between the branches but I'm not sure that was a success. But I could leave my painting to dry and have another play with the beams of light if I want to. I add a few more thinner branches using my liner brush and some thinned out Van Dyke brown and black. I'll add a few highlights to the top of my tree just to finish off where those branches leave the top of the canvas. Now one of my favourite parts of this painting is painting the trunk. I've got a very loose mixture of sienna, white and a little yellow ochre on the filbert brush and with very light pressure, barely touching the canvas. Just let the paint bump where it touches the Van Dyke brown and black mixture which is nice and sticky and dark. 
it'll grab the paint from my brush. I like to give my Bob Ross paintings a bit of an extra twist, and that applies to my tree trunk as well. I could do a nice sort of knobbly effect, but just sort of going across the trunk as well as down. Save lots of lovely dark at the base of the tree where it meets the ground. I want to put some little highlights in there later on. Now for an extra special touch, I've added a little bit of blue to my colour. This gives what they call a reflective light. Maybe it's reflecting back off of another surface. In this case, some water. It casts a lovely blue backlighting to the tree and it really makes that edge stand out. It's a nice little effect and you should use it often. I see the chance for another little feature. I think there could be an owl living in this tree, in this little hole. I'll put a few touches of highlight around it just to make it really stand out. Time to add some water to my painting. And for this, I'm gonna be using some white mixed with a little bit of phthalo blue, but it's far too bright. I want this to be much more sort of subdued. So I put a bit of lavender color into it. I'll take a small touch on the edge of my palette knife and let's see what this looks like. Now remember, I said have a nice dark color back there. And this is the reason why. That dark background helps this color show up. Now I put a bit of paint on there first of all and I'm using the small blade of my knife just to sort of work it into the canvas. I want my water to look like it's coming from further back in the painting. So I do a little sort of curl and take it off into the distance, back into the shadows. Again, small detail, but it makes such a difference to the finished painting. Today, I'm doing my waterfall with my palette knife. A tiny, tiny roll of highlighting color just on that small blade. Touch and pull straight down. I pick up a tiny bit of that lavender colour on the corner of my one inch brush. That's the nice one, my highlighting brush. And I just want to sort of tap it in to create the effect of maybe a little bit of bubble and splash coming up from the surface of the water, but not too big. I'm just about to get myself into a pickle. Yes, I start adding another waterfall. There really isn't room for it, but I'm so enjoying playing with this painting that well, I've become blind to all the problems I'm creating for myself. Just adding far too much detail. I'm overcrowding my painting. It's a common mistake, I'm afraid. I decide I'm going to just live with it for the time being. I'll do some rocks instead. I'll add a few nice dark Van Dyke brown and black shapes here to the right hand side. Sort of with a nice bit of a curl to them. And maybe a few sort of soft shapes on this left side as well. Just to contain the main waterfall. Again, dark on dark doesn't show very well, so you'll just have to trust me as I add some of the dark green paint for some grassy effects later on. Again, I'm just texturing my canvas at this stage. It'll all come nice and bright in a second. To highlight my rocks, I'm going to use some of the same color I used for my tree trunk, but or maybe a slightly darker version maybe a bit more Van Dyke brown mixed in with it. Again, don't forget where the light's coming from, top left hand side, so only half of the rock is gonna be in highlight. Same technique though as doing the tree trunk. Very gentle pressure, just touch and don't do too much. At this stage, I leave them probably a little bit on the dark side. I'll stand back for my painting and make a decision later on if I need to add more highlight or not. Top tip, the best highlights on these rocks are the ones you do once. If you over highlight them, then you'll find that eventually they just become brown smudges. Do a little stand back. Now, back into those highlighting colors with my nice one inch brush. 
This time I'm pushing with the whole flat of the brush. I'm trying to get some nice grassy effects, but I don't want it to look too smooth and flat. I want it a little bit more natural looking, so I'll use my brush flat, and then sometimes I'll also tip it on a corner. I want to try and save a little shadow line though, so don't over brighten things. On this side, I change colors a little bit. I used a touch more Indian yellow and ochre. It looks very different to the grassy green colors on the opposite side of the bank. And I sometimes see this in my own paintings, that I have two very dissimilar colors. So make sure you use a little bit of this color on the other bank as well, just to even things out. Adds a sense of balance and harmony in your paintings. I'm still a bit undecided about that waterfall in the foreground, but there's one other thing I'd like to do to my watery areas, and that's just to smooth them down a little bit. Sometimes the palette knife can look a little bit sort of sharp, and I like to take a clean fan brush sometimes and just gently brush over some of those areas just to sort of take the edge off them a little bit and see if I like them a bit better. But no, ultimately, the only thing I can do is take a palette knife to that area and just scrape off all the paint. Don't be afraid to go back and make changes to your paintings. In this case, I simply pick up a fan brush with some nice lavender colour on it and block out the work that I did. It doesn't take a minute to repair my painting and to make these changes. I think sometimes when we do work to our paintings, we fear that we're maybe going to make an even worse mistake. I always say, if you don't venture, you never gain. So never be afraid to go back and make some changes. I think I prefer my painting the way it looks now. I'll add a few nice grassy details to finish off the banks. And there we have it, a Bob Ross classic, Serenity. So there you have it, a Bob Ross classic, Serenity. But there's another lovely painting coming right along. It's got lots of mistakes in it as well. Happy painting, people.